The Targeted Assessment for Prevention, or TAP strategy, is a framework for quality improvement developed by the CDC to use data for action to prevent healthcare-associated infections, or HAIs. The strategy is supported by a suite of tools and resources uniquely designed to address the prevention of catheter-associated urinary tract infections, CAUTI, central line-associated bloodstream infections, CLABSI, and Clostridioides difficile infections, or CDI. In this video, we'll take a brief look at how to identify and target healthcare facilities and units with an excess burden of HAIs. We'll also look at how to deploy TAP facility assessments within these identified target locations. The first component of the TAP strategy, Target, works by using data to identify facilities and units with the greatest room for reducing the rate of HAIs and achieving their hospital safety goals. One way to target locations for assessment is to generate TAP reports within the National Healthcare Safety Network, NHSN. TAP reports include a metric called the Cumulative Attributable Difference, or CAD. It's a prioritization metric that identifies the number of infections a location would have had to prevent to reach their reduction goal, or in other words, the number of excess infections above a reduction goal. TAP reports can be generated by group users, such as health departments and healthcare systems, and by facility-level users. For group users, TAP reports rank facilities based on their CAD. Facilities with higher CADs, and therefore a higher burden of excess infections, indicate where partners may direct prevention efforts to achieve reduction goals more efficiently. At the facility level, TAP reports rank individual units by their CAD, allowing facilities to identify and target specific units with the greatest opportunity for improvement. County and CLABSI TAP reports display unit-level CAD data. Of note, CDI TAP reports display CAD data only at the facility level. While facility-level TAP reports are available for methicillin-resistant Staphylococcus aureus, or MRSA, there are no additional TAP strategy tools for MRSA at this time. Partners may also identify and prioritize facilities and units based on contextual factors, patient populations, resources available, and previous and or current prevention interventions. Additional available data sources may be considered, including case counts and rates per unit, laboratory testing data, antibiotic prescribing data, and routine audits of infection prevention practices. For a step-by-step -step detailed description on how to generate and interpret TAP reports within NHSN, check out the video on Tapping into HAI Prevention and Using Data for Action by clicking the link on this webpage. The next step of the TAP strategy is to assess infection prevention practices in targeted locations to identify opportunities for improvement using the TAP facility assessment tools. These are comprehensive assessments completed by frontline personnel that provide actionable information from responses, encourage real-time teaching moments, and can generate cues to action among staff and leadership. TAP assessments allow one to prioritize and systematically close the gaps, as stated by Jamie Moran of Qualys Health. Now let's discuss how to deploy assessments. TAP facility assessment tools are available for CAUTI, CLABSI, and CDI, and may be deployed within the targeted locations to assess prevention policies and practices. Partners can access the TAP Facility Assessment Deployment Packet, available at this website for more detailed information on how to deploy the TAP Facility Assessments. This packet includes a checklist providing step-by-step -step instructions to guide partners as they prepare to deploy the TAP Facility Assessments. It is helpful to start by determining where to deploy assessments. The TAP Facility Assessment tools can be deployed across facilities or within targeted units with the greatest room for improvement. Partners should use data for action to identify where to deploy TAP facility assessments by generating TAP reports in NHSN, reviewing other data sources as available, and considering contextual factors. Next, facilities should determine who will be completing the assessments. Facilities are encouraged to collect as many assessments as possible from a range of respondents. This may include frontline providers such as nurses, nurse assistants, and physicians, mid-level staff such as quality infection prevention, unit or nurse managers, senior leadership, and ancillary staff such as EVS, physical occupational therapy, and pharmacy. Define timeline for collection. It may be helpful to define the start and end dates for assessment collection, noting that this timeline may be extended as needed. 
In general, facilities collect assessments for two weeks, but this can vary based on factors within the facility and units. Finding a time that best suits the facility can help optimize assessment collection. Facilities can then select how they would like to deploy the assessments. TAP facility assessments are available for distribution on paper and electronically through SurveyMonkey, REDCap, and PDF fillable forms. Facilities are encouraged to select the deployment methods that are best for them. It may be helpful to consider multiple methods based on staff roles and units. For example, SurveyMonkey may be the best for those with access to a computer, while paper forms may be best for staff without computer access. CDC can provide each facility with their selected deployment methods. Providing paper copies allows staff to complete the assessments at their own pace and does not require access to a computer. Providing a drop box for completed assessments at a designated location can facilitate collection. Paper assessments may also be distributed and collected during meetings, trainings, or orientations. CDC is available to perform data entry of all responses received on paper. Assessments can also be distributed using SurveyMonkey. A SurveyMonkey account is not required, and CDC can provide each facility with a unique link to distribute to staff. The link can be emailed to staff, added to an intranet page, or opened on a shared computer or tablet. Staff must complete the assessment in one sitting, as they will be unable to save their progress and will be unable to return to their assessment if they close out of the link. If preferred, partners may use their own SurveyMonkey account to collect assessments. REDCap is another option for electronic assessments. REDCap assessments are available to partners who have their own REDCap access. CDC can provide the data dictionaries, allowing partners to import the assessment templates that are ready for distribution into their REDCap account. This method is useful for partners familiar with REDCap and provides an electronic collection method alternative to SurveyMonkey. PDF fillable forms provide an electronic method for facilities unable to use either SurveyMonkey or REDCap. The PDF forms can be emailed to staff or saved on a shared computer. As with all electronic modalities, partners are encouraged to pilot the PDF forms prior to widely distributing them to mitigate any technical difficulties. Once partners have decided on the logistics, they can submit their deployment details. If you would like CDC to provide tailored assessments for deployment, please complete the questions in the TAP Facility Assessment Pre-Deployment Worksheet, available on page 4 of the TAP Facility Assessment Deployment Packet. This worksheet allows the option for facilities to customize their assessments by including unit names and specifying additional edits to improve staff understanding and interpretation. For example, facilities may edit the respondent role options to best align with facility staffing structure, add questions to the demographics section, and make minor edits to terminology, or remove select questions. Before deploying assessments, facilities should identify champions or cheerleaders. The greater the number of assessments collected, the greater the ability to identify gaps. To increase participation, it may be helpful to identify champions or cheerleaders within each unit to encourage completion among staff. Support from leadership on the importance and intent of the assessments may also improve participation. Consider messaging to notify staff. Notify senior and unit level leadership about the assessments, including their intent, the collection period, and which staff and units are participating. This may help to ensure they are informed and supportive of staff taking the time to complete assessments. When asking staff to complete assessments, describe the intent in relevant details, including that all responses are anonymous. They take approximately 10 minutes to complete and that you are interested in their awareness and perception of policies that are currently in place. It may also be helpful to provide information for a facility point of contact if needed for questions. Example language is provided on page 5 of the TAP Facility Assessment Deployment Packet. You are now ready to collect assessments. Distribute assessments using the methods selected and work with leadership and champions or cheerleaders to encourage collection. Consider deployment during meetings or trainings to increase participation. Send periodic reminders asking staff to complete the assessments and consider adjusting the time period for collection as needed. When you have finished collecting assessments, you can submit them for summarization. CDC is available to summarize assessments and create customized feedback reports for each facility. Details on how to submit completed assessments to CDC are included in the TAP Facility Assessment Deployment Method Sheet on page 3 of the TAP Facilities Assessment Deployment Packet.
All assessment and summarization tools are also available for partners to use independently, so full use of the TAP strategy and accompanying tools does not require submission of assessments to CDC for technical assistance. In the next video, we'll look at how to interpret the TAP facility assessment results to identify opportunities for improvement and guide prevention efforts.